Hello everybody! So, as I told you last week and the week before, my plans for today's video was to show you more about the Jot Touch. But while I was editing the video, I was interrupted by the delivery of the new Adobe Ink and Slide. To be honest, I was really excited to share these new products with you as soon as possible. So, change of plan? Today I will give you a first quick look at the products themselves, and next week I'll do a more in-depth review of the Ink and Slide alongside the Jot Touch, who shares some of the features of the ink. So if I tell you Adobe, the only thing you'll probably think about is software. In fact, since its creation in 1982, as far as I know, Adobe has never worked on anything but software. So when they announced that for the first time in their history they would start selling hardware, it was kind of a big deal. To work on this project, codenamed Mighty and Napoleon, they teamed up with Adonit, who actually builds the Ink and Slide, which are the real names now. If you watched my first video about the Adonit Jot Touch, you know that it uses a technology called Pixel Point. The Adobe Ink actually uses the same technology that allows the stylus to have a fine tip instead of a fat rubber tip. Ok, now let's dive right in and do a quick unboxing. I have to say, the packaging of the styluses I've bought recently keep getting better and better, and this one is no exception. This is exactly what you would expect from a team of really creative people translating what they know about design into a real-life product. Once you've removed the outside part of the packaging, you find a colorful box and inside an audacious geometry to hold and display the ink and slide. Under this first layer, there is a card with a quote from Paul Klee, and on the other side, you get invited to connect to the Creative Cloud, which I'll mention briefly in a moment and next week in more details. Under the card, you find three more things neatly packed. The first one contains a grey cloth, the kind you can use to clean a screen, and you also have a quick start guide translated in several languages. The second box contains a simple USB cable. Now, you might be wondering what is this third one, the cylinder you have here. Well, I'm going to show you this first because I think it's really smart. One problem I have with most of the styluses I've reviewed so far is that they don't come with a way to protect them, like a cap or a box. The Adobe Ink doesn't have this problem because it comes with this nice plastic box that can hold it and keep it protected in a bag. But it's even more than a simple box. If you look at the cap, you'll see this micro USB port, and if you look on the other side of the cap, you'll see three pins. You probably already figured it out, but if I put the back of the ink next to this, it should be clear what this cap does. It's actually the charger of the ink. Similarly to what we have with the Jot Touch, there is a magnet inside this cap, and you can snap the ink inside. If I do it again, you can hear really precisely the snapping sound. Then you can just plug one end of the USB cable on a powered USB port, and the other end here on the cap. After a few seconds, a pulsing red ring will indicate the stylus is charging. The nice thing is, you can still use it as a box while the ink charges. I didn't find any official information, but it's safe to assume it's very similar to the Jot Touch. That is to say, it should take 90 minutes to charge, and then you have more than 10 hours of battery life. Ok, now let's have a look at the ink itself. The body of the stylus is one single aluminum shell that is hydroformed, which means they use water at high pressure to get this very peculiar shape I'll talk about in just a moment. The tip is strictly the same as the one on the Jot Touch, because they use the same pixel point technology. At the back you have an LED that can display the color spectrum and that is used to communicate the state of the stylus. Here, for example, when the LED cycles through the spectrum, it means the stylus is on and waiting for an iPad. The Adobe Ink also have one button that is in the exact correct position where your thumb will be when you hold it. It's very easy to use. In fact, the whole stylus fits incredibly well in your hand, because its shape makes perfect sense. Let me explain why. If you look at the shape your fingers make when you hold a pen, it's very clear that it's not a circle, but a triangle. So, the first good idea would be to say, ok, let's create a pen shaped like a triangle from one end to the other. But then, let's look at what would happen on the other side of your hand. 
Here's again the triangle of the side of my fingers in red. The thing is, the pen will basically rest on this line on the back of my hand. And you can see the problem here, none of the three sides of the red triangle is parallel with this line. So the only solution is to rotate the second triangle so that it fits perfectly also in the back of your hand. And there you have it, the shape of the Adobe Ink. It's a triangle all the way through, but it rotates by 30 degrees from one side to the other. Very smart, yet very simple and obvious. If you compare the Adobe Ink with the Jot Touch, I would say they have roughly the same weight, but the ink is slightly longer than the Touch. The best way to take advantage of all the ink's features at the moment is to use one of the two new Adobe apps. I will show you this in more details next week, but I would still like to give you a quick look at the ink working with these apps. Let's start with Line. The first thing you want to do, as always, is to connect the stylus. This first step is very simple and will remind you of a certain pencil. You just hold the stylus on the target and the green LED flash indicates the stylus is connected. Then you can configure the stylus, you can choose the color that the LED will flash when you double click on the button to make the stylus more personal, you can give it a name and also specify how you hold the pen for better accuracy and finally you can connect it to the Adobe Creative Cloud. And that's it, you can start using it right away. In this app, the button is not to cancel actions, as it's usually the case for the Job Touch, for example, but is used to bring up the pen tip menu. This menu gives you shortcuts to change the color or the tool and is very useful especially in full screen mode like here. Of course, the ink is pressure sensitive, so if I select a brush tool using the pen tip menu again, you will see I can vary the property of the line, like the width, by changing the pressure. I told you earlier about the stylus being connected to the Creative Cloud, and I'll show you just one feature using this today. I can hold the button of the ink and then hold the tip on the screen until I see this white flash. That means the drawing has been copied in the cloud clipboard. Now, if I go in another app, or even on another iPad, I can paste my drawing very easily. Just hold the button again, and this time, just tap the tip on the screen to paste. To be clear, the drawing was not copied in the app, or not even in the iPad, but is virtually inside the stylus via the Creative Cloud. I say virtually, of course, because there is no actual storage in the stylus, you need an internet connection. Let's finish with the other device called Slide. I think it's the first of its kind, a digital ruler, to quote Adobe. It's made of the same aluminum and white plastic as the ink, with the same sense of very high quality, except maybe for the button, who seems to have a little bit too much room to move. The way you use Slide is very simple and intuitive. Just put it on the screen and two guides will immediately appear. Then you can use any of the guides as you would the side of a ruler. Of course, it is a lot more than a simple ruler. For example, you can see the guides can automatically snap to the extremities of the lines I just draw to help me align everything. But that's not all. You can also use the button to switch between different geometrical shapes. Again, you can see that slide tries to help me with the alignment by showing these yellow guides and snapping to certain points. I can use the shapes as stencils and draw only specific parts, or I can just double tap to use them as stamps. Now, you might be thinking, that's great, but it's yet another device I have to recharge. But the thing is, you don't, because slide doesn't require power to work. In fact, if you look under a slide, you'll notice these three gray circles. Each of these three points acts as the tip of any regular passive stylus, and they are responsible for telling the app where the ruler is. To prove this, I will show you that I can pass myself off a slide by using three fingers in the correct position and by tapping on the screen with a fourth finger to simulate using slide's button. To be really clear, I'm not cheating by showing you touch slide which is a built-in feature everybody gets for free inside Adobe Line to let you access some features of Slide without the actual device. But you can see it shows those two nice handles to use it with one hand. What I showed you previously is not this feature 
and you can see I just deactivated it. It's really the app thinking I'm Slide. Of course, it's really uncomfortable and merely a nice trick to show you how Slide actually works. Well, that's all I can show you today. The last thing I want to tell you is that unfortunately, the stylus is only officially available in the US right now, but I hope it will ship worldwide very soon. Now I really want to use these products to be able to give you more meaningful comments about how they feel. Next week I will show you Ink and Slide in action in the two apps you just saw and I will put the link here in the bottom when the video is out. If you are wondering what is this stylus I've mentioned several times during this video called the Adonit Jaw Touch, then you can click on the link at the top to watch my initial review. Don't forget to click on the left to subscribe to my channel if you enjoy this video and to follow my English Twitter account. And as always, I thank you for watching and see you next week. Bye bye.